more about that. Have you have you fished? I know you went to uh, Lake X. Oh, or whatever. Yeah. We went to Lake X yesterday. What, have you been fishing fork at all? Bombed them. Uh, I've been on fork. Uh, not that. Oh, long. you couldn't be. I you're fishing champs. I'm a fishing champ, so yeah, I couldn't be, be on the water this okay. week here. So I took a guide trip over to my Lake X, and uh, we caught over 50 over there, and we had a lot of three and four pounders. No, no five and sixes, you know, but just had a great entertainment day, you know. So um, makes a lot of yeah. difference whenever you bounce around. I mean, there's been guys going to Holbrook. Uh, I know a guy caught a seven over there uh, yesterday, I think, and then. Uh, but there's other lakes also, you know. So. I'll gravitate to power plant lakes. I'll go to Welch. I'll go to, uh, he and I went over to Martin Creek, Martin Creek and yeah. to Perky, you know, I mean, so we'll make that lap and go around all those lakes there during this time of the year, you know, just for some fun, you know, as far as that goes. So, yeah, kind especially of, if this one's, this lake's been a little bit ornery. To, yeah, that's, that never happened. Uh, <laughs> just to kind of summarize for you guys, because I know there's several of y'all sitting here tonight that are fishing champs tomorrow and stuff like that, but. Man, if it was me and I didn't get a lot of time, I've been dealing with trying to get my new boat, and I've been having heck with that, and I've had a lot going on off the water, so I haven't gotten to fishing a lot this week. But uh, if it was me fishing bass champs tomorrow, mostly probably just because of how I like to fish, I would I would be focused on finding the warmest water I could find. And, and you don't need to do that on some map study. You're going to need to find these kind of smaller, flat pockets within creek arms that have been getting the sun you know, the north, northwest pockets, that's where you're going to be. Something I learned when the snow was melting this week, this was really cool. I, I'd forgotten about this. So everything was covered in snow, like everything, right? We all know that. Was well, the snow started to melt and I-20 opened up, I was driving up and down I-20 one day, and I noticed something. And we've all, you know, you've probably heard this before, but they tell you, you know, early in the spawning season, early in the year like this, you want to fish the north banks in the pockets, in the coves, because that's getting more sunlight. Now. I've always known that, and I've always believed that, but I didn't realize how dramatic of an effect it was, and this, the snow melting really opened my eyes, okay? And if you think about that, it's getting that shade on that bank over there, because in the wintertime, that's when the sun is the furthest south of us. So the south bank is shaded by the trees more in the wintertime than it is any other time of year, and the north bank's more exposed directly to it. So... On I-20, runs east and west. On the north side of the highway, no snow, none, not a drop, all grass. On the south side of the highway, solid snowbank. I mean, complete solid snowbank versus none at all. And it really was like a real visual bright, <laughs> bright white <laughs> example of how dramatic that north bank effect is on these spawning pockets. It's, I know. There's something wrong with me. I'm driving down I-20, no water in sight, and I'm still thinking about bass fishing. I don't know how I'll take something that has nothing to do with bass fishing, but that's where my mind went was, man, that North Bank deal is a thing now. So what you got to do is you got to find those pockets that have that northern exposure, that northwest corner is going to be the shallow flat water. Those are going to be the ones that are going to get the warmest right now. Okay, and That's what you want to look for. Um, and I would be hunting the warmest water I could find. And as far as baits go, there is one bait to me on this time of year in this situation, the warm trends on this particular lake that has been the best bait to throw in this situation since we can all remember. And that is a black with blue flake Cinco. You know, that's the deal. Now, if the wind's blowing in there, you need to pick up your chatter bait and your spinner bait, right? But especially if you don't have too much wind, that black and blue Cinco on this lake is a powerful, powerful weapon. And for you tournament guys that got to deal with slot fish, Here's the beauty of it. It'll catch you unders and get you limit. And if there's a big one in there, she'll eat it too. Like, it will catch both ends of the slot this time of year using that black and blue Cinco in that warming water. If I was fishing bass chips more, that would be my game plan. Find the warmest water I can find and throw a black and blue Cinco and fish it painfully slow. I'm going for your recommendation a while ago, what you said. Now listen, he said bedfish. Those those fish are on beds. There's some. I am There's recommending that everyone fishing the bass champs, they all sight fish tomorrow. Every, <laughs> well, there's not enough for everybody. All of you. <laughs> there's not sight very fishing. Many of them. That's the ticket. There's not very many of them, but the, and I will tell you this: when you're in them warm pockets, you better keep your eyes open because you might find one that you need. I ain't telling you to go sight fish all day, but you might want to keep your eyes peeled because you might see one that you need for that tournament. I would there. rather them all be sight fishing. Well, I'm sure because you're fishing it too. That's. Well, that, that's, beside, like, that's beside the there's point. There's like 10 fish on a bed in this whole lake. He wants 200 and something people to go sight. <laughs> that's right. That's right. 
I get it. What about questions, man? Nobody's asking. We need questions. Not. We do need questions. What That's about these uh, little creeks that are running from the big rain we had last night. Yeah. Interesting thing about that is, and um, is and. It depends on whether the rain's a cold rain or a warm rain. And I did a little research and finding out that uh, those water running in from those creeks is actually warm. Mm -hmm. It is. And that's that's kind of, uh, you know, you can put that all around the lake and that's helped. That's aided a lot of this uh -huh. stuff as far as warm. No, just uh, these backs of these pockets. Yeah. So let me put it to you this way. We talk about the water that warms first has less volume to it, right? That's why we're looking mm -hmm. for such shallow water. Well, a creek has a lot less volume than a lake. Mm -hmm. So as that water makes its way down that creek, it's getting heated up by the same sunshine in a more dramatic way because there's less volume. So as it's coming down that creek, it's getting warm and it's all flowing in. It's like heated water coming into the lake. It will, yeah, the running water, when you, if you've got sun and you've got a warming trend, the running water into a lake will always be warmer than the lake water because it's, it's a little bit of water running into a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So that's... Um, you fish the tournament for? Mm -hmm. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> it's just like, just like when you leave your water closet stripping in the house, they don't freeze to move in water and yeah. then yeah. the fridge. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But, uh, Questions? More? What, what about the rain that came in last night? I know it came up about six inches overnight, but when I left the house this morning to go and it came back, it came up another six inches, it seemed It's like. still flowing in, yep. and I drove around the lake today, crossing bridges and looking, <clears throat> stopping and looking at the flow, and the water is moving hard. Oh, yeah. I so it's going to continue to come up. That chocolate milk coming in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Several places that I saw, and then if you looked around in the small, small creeks that run into bigger creeks, mm -hmm. every one of those were roaring uh, mm -hmm. today, and that was midday whenever I went and checked that. Just... Just to have it in my mind, just to know what's what to what to think about tomorrow. Was tomorrow's going to be a deal? You're going to want to think about one thing for tomorrow with this tournament with these guys. No one, and this is the first time I've seen this happen. No one person has an advantage in this tournament this weekend. Yeah. And the number one reason why is they had no chance to practice last weekend. I mean, the conditions were so poor, and then the whole week prior to that was. You couldn't even got on the lake and start. Mm -hmm. So really, the last time you could have even made a shot at catching a fish here was probably two weeks ago. And they so, couldn't fish this week because Bass Champs had And then limits. you were dead water all this off week. This yeah. week yeah. And so nobody got to get on. So this is going to be probably the most equally balanced fair tournament that I've probably ever seen. Is all that rain going to hurt or help? Well, it, it'll hurt in some areas, and it'll help not hurt or maybe even help in others. Uh, one thing you're going to have to consider when you're doing your map study to get ready for tomorrow, tonight, is you're gonna have to look at creeks that get the most flow. Your major creeks that get a lot of flow, they're probably gonna be blown out. You probably only run into the back of those. Like you probably don't want to go back. You know what I mean? Like the major flowing creeks. But what you can find is within those creeks there will be pockets. And if anybody has ever fished a river system, like a true river system, then you'll know the river can muddy up when you get rain. But there's backwater areas that we call oxbows that will stay clear. Some will, some won't. Depends on how the water back cycles and flows and what keeps it from going all the way in or not. But there will be areas of this lake where the water is flowing hard down a creek, but there will be a pocket that kind of goes in there and has a bend to it or something that keeps that creek flow from running back in there. And that's going to be a smaller pocket that might have a better warming trend anyway, and the muddy water is not going to go in there. And that's what you're looking for. So, so, so let's talk about the Pope. Um, you're giving these guys way too much information. <laughs> Over here, man. <laughs> you got to compete against the law. Uh, you're giving it. Let's talk about the Pope. Uh, the thing, too, about this that's rather unusual is that this is a situation that's never happened before where you've got extreme so cold extreme. zero, and then less than a week later, it was 80 degrees. Yeah. And so these all these people here have <laughs> never witnessed that, and so they don't know exactly what to expect. And a lot of these people are going out and just going fishing. You know, just use What's use your knowledge and just just go fishing, and you're going to be there's going to be people burn a lot of gas tomorrow. I can tell you that. What's going to happen tomorrow is there's going to be some guys that catch them pretty darn good. I think I think there mm -hmm. are going to be some guys that get on some stuff and get some good bites and catch them good. And there's going to be some guys. There's going to be probably quite a few people, probably more than most, that are going to go out here and leave scratching their head, going, "Is there any fish in this lake at all?" <laughs> you know, like there's just been so much changes. <laughs> the guys that can block all that and just go fishing and, and, and can key in on something that works for them. They're going to have no problem. And that's all. Anytime you get drastic changes, you know, and this is such a drastic, I mean, this is more drastic than anything any of us have ever seen, ever. So. 
Some guys are going to catch them. A lot of guys are going to be lost. There was a lot more water here than there was like from highway from Broken Bow to here. When you get to Sulphur Springs, the ditches are just yeah. Oh, flooded. Yeah. No, we had a little band. That, we had a little little string of bands that just popped us last night. It started about five or six o'clock in the evening. Had a couple little strong cells and then kind of carried in the night. And it just ran right down this little corridor, kind of from I twenty north, uh, I twenty to I thirty corridor. That little stretch in there. Yeah, we got popped hard. I mean, we got a lot of rain. A lot of rain last night. Right. It, and there was light rain on either side, but all the heavy stuff was in that little window. We got the wind off, but we were right on the edge. Well, you're in Oklahoma. Y'all always get the wind. That's right. Y'all don't ever not have wind. I've never been to Oklahoma and it'd be calm, ever. Kite flying capital of the world. Is that right, J-Bo? 110%. And look how little he is. He don't even get it because he's so little, he doesn't feel the wind. It goes right right right. You're fat like me, you can get blown off your boat up there, J-Bo. He has shoes that weigh 30 pounds a piece, (laughs) so he has to have that to fish in Oklahoma. Absolutely. Questions? Some more. Got to be some more open-ended questions. the last three days. Okay. You know where I fish. I do. I was in your neck of the woods the other day in that video. I missed you that day. Yeah. I didn't fish that day, but uh, uh, they're, the beds focus away from the bank because they're not. They're, yeah. They're, they're cleaning the beds. I'm catching all bucks one after another. I see on the 360 a female cruise through, but they don't stop. They just seem to cruise through. Yeah. You know, you can see the what's going to happen. Fish, yeah. But uh, their uh, stumps, five to six feet. Black and blue jig. Mm-hmm. That's the main. That's the main deal right there. Period. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Me. Well, these they guys are, are looking for bugs. The beds clean. Yeah, they're, no, they're, they're working the beds. The <laughs> they're working the beds, yeah. but there's no females in the bed. Right. These guys. These guys are all looking for males in that tournament, though. They're looking for them 15 Yeah, inches. we're not interested in those trash fish. We call them they trash don't fish. Want any six, the ones between 16 or 24, <laughs> those are trash fish. Oh, man. Now, and what you're going to see is those those fish that are cruising two, three days from now, they'll, like, some will lock, some, maybe a female or two here or there will get on the bed tomorrow and partner up. But really, the next day and the day after that, you'll see the females that are up cruising right now will get them a partner in the next few days. They will. It's not going to get cold enough to keep them from doing it at this point. You know, we're not having that much of a cool off temperature wise, and our night temps aren't just dropping dramatically low. We're not getting any thirty degree nights or anything coming up, so uh, it's nothing that's going to stop it at this point. I don't think. And yeah, there there are males in there that you can see, like you said. But I'm glad you backed me up on that because I thought everybody here was going to call me a liar. But the hardest <laughs> but part about true. this too is is that what he's talking about, what he's seen, is is in one or two percent of the lake. I mean, these are isolated areas that are unique. And, I mean, you just don't drive out there anywhere you want to drive and find this. I don't think. No. 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 And it's five beds. That seems to be the number. Sometimes <laughs> it's six. But they're five big beds. And they're obvious because they're the first ones of the year. And they're always they're 30, really feet obvious. Or 30 feet from the bank. You know, where everybody's coming along throwing at the bank. And you also and saw that. They, you also saw that happen. before the rain, correct? Yeah. Yeah, some of those areas it's going to be harder to see them. Now it's six, seven feet deep. <laughs> in some, no, in no, some of those areas it's going to be harder because to see them. It might be a little more difficult right now. Yeah. But in some of those areas, that, like I was talking about, that in. don't get the flow, you'll still see them. You know what I'm saying? Mm, like, dirty. listen, mm-hmm. I've caught a lot of good bedfish because everybody's like, it's too dirty to bedfish. Like, there was a march a couple years ago where I literally had a guy cancel a trip because he told me I was lying about being on Lake Fork because I said I was bedfishing. And he said, I was bed fishing with so-and-so guy, and he's the best sight fisherman on the lake. And we hadn't been able to see any fish on beds. There's no way you're looking at bed fish. I said, I've been on Lake Fork every day, and I'm bed fishing. I'm looking at them and catching them. Like, you can see them when that water is dirty. And the main thing is you got to see them move. But also, there's areas that people overlook because they get to going back into an area, and they're like, man, look how dirty this water is. We ain't going to be able to bed fish, and they, they bail on it, right? But if you search out that clear water in those oxbow type of areas wherever that just picture the creek as a river where it flows something that curves back away from it and is exposed to that northwest sun that the northwest corner is exposed to the sun you go back in there and find you some clear water you're in business jack uh, but i'm going to tell you a story about that too what he's talking about he you, might have the gift which my tournament partner on rayburn has it this guy has radar vision <laughs> i'm telling you and and i'm not as good as we bed fished there before with him and I, I think I can see him pretty daggum good. And I'm looking in there, and I mean, I'm like, 
you see one there, and I mean, this water's dirty, and he could see that fish. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's right there. Look at the tails right there. And I was like, wow. Some, some people have that gift to where their vision is, is a, they have the ability to see those fish. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, well, that 360, you don't need to see it. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Look at that. There he is. You can see each one sitting in the hole, you know. You're like, oh, yeah. Oh, this is too good. In three and four foot of water? Uh -huh. Five and six. Five and six, out further. Yeah, because I think there's a threshold there where those 360s don't exactly work perfect, but I think that is the threshold. That five, six foot is the threshold. I like to see it. That's cheat know. code fishing, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Like back in the day when you had that old Super Nintendo Mario Brothers and you're like, left, right, A, A, B, B, start, select. The contra. <laughs> like, that's what you're doing with that yeah, 360 you, on bed fishing. You're putting the cheat code in. On man. the megas on the side imaging, you can see if you're running down a bank line and you can see beds on a three on a, a, a mega. Yeah, but only while you're moving. 360. Yeah, you got to be moving. You, you got to be moving in order to see that's where it, they're that's at. A, that's a big advantage of 360. Yeah. Is you can you can sit still. Still sit still. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah, I've already decided I'm going to have one of them pretty soon. It's good for fun destruction. Go fund me. Exactly. Me too. You know what I'm talking about? Me, me too if my parts will ever get shit. <laughs> I guess I sold my boat the Friday before all the crazy snow started. Right? Like that's when I sold my boat. Right? Got rid of it that day. I was supposed to get my boat the next week. Well, obviously nothing happened the next week because the whole state was iced in. And I had like mounting brackets and stuff for all these $800 million thousand of electronics that I've got ordered. And the, so you got to get all these mounting brackets for it. Those stinking parts are still in Atlanta. They got rerouted to Georgia because Texas froze, and they're still in Georgia. Like, mm. we've been thawed out for a week, and they ain't even shipped them out of Georgia yet. And I'm like, uh, hello. <laughs> like, I kind of need a boat to do my job, people. Can y'all please send my parts? That'd be great. So I've been without a boat for two weeks now, and I'm about to just... Let's see. <laughs> oh. and, and we're on the best big fish run that has ever existed in the last 30 years in the state of Texas, and I've got no boat. You can go with <laughs> us. We're going to Dallas anymore. I've never, like, I have a huge amount of empathy for people that battle depression. I've never understood it. I'm not a guy that gets depressed about anything. I now understand it. I've been freaking depressed. <laughs> I've literally been sitting at home going, man, what am I going to do with my life? <laughs> Everything's, the yeah. world's coming to an end. <laughs> Biden's going to destroy the universe. <laughs> the aliens are about to land. If somebody doesn't get me a boat, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> okay. Questions? More? Got to be some more. Right. So I ran yes, sir. into a like, guy out there uh, yesterday or day before, and he had taken his uh, live sight, you know, the Garmin, and he he was a fighter pilot. And he says, you know, he told me the term, but it turns it sideways. Perspective mode. Perspective mode. Yep. And he was explaining to me how yep. he has to piece it together in his mind because of the way it works. And, you know, he said it helps to be a fighter pilot, but... He was doing pretty good. I, I will give him credit. Yeah, the for that. Per perspective mode is what you got to do for shallow water in Alaska. No doubt. Yeah, and so I don't know if any of you guys are running perspective mode, but I didn't like it when I was. He, he it. Yeah, he said it takes a while to get used to it, but once you start piecing the the segment together in your mind, what you're seeing, he said, then you get it. And so because I was you use perspective I was mode. At a fish yes, and he was a, and it is amazing. There you go. It's amazing. Mm. Now, the hummingbird one's going to have a 30 degree cone instead of a 15, what I heard. That's, I guess we'll have to wait. I heard we'll have to wait and see. But that's next month, right? You know, everything, March. so everything, March, yeah. that's, whoa, 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 hold on now, hold on now. March is when they're going to announce the release, so that's the release date. Well, December 4th was the active target release date. Nobody got one until middle of January. Uh, just so you guys know, everything in this industry is backed up. You couldn't get a Solix graph. You couldn't get a new Solix graph right now if you had a million dollars to pay for it. You can't get them. Everything's backed up. So I know Hummingbird has announced three months ago that they were releasing theirs in March. But are we going to actually be able to get them and put them on units? Just nobody can get anything right now. Everyone's using all those checks for electronics. <laughs> Stimulus checks. Free grab. Yeah, that's plausible. Yeah. Don't get me started, please. I will tell you this. This industry. This, this industry. This industry has definitely experienced some astronomical growth. Uh, there's been a little bit of a perfect storm within the fishing industry the last couple of years between high school fishing becoming more popular, fishing becoming way inf like unmeasurably more popular on social media. Thank you. Appreciate that. I was a, not that I did it, but I'm just glad that the industry grew on social media because that's what allowed me to make my living. So, 
Uh, but the exposure to young people in fishing has increased in ways that are so far outside the, the limitations of the way this industry has always operated. Uh, I don't think anybody in this industry understands really what we're dealing with yet. You add on top of that, you got all these young people by the millions, literally by millions of young people that are now into bass fishing and want to bass fish. And anybody that's raised kids know whatever your kids are into, now you're into. Like if your kid's a baseball player, then you spend thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment and tournaments and lessons, and it doesn't matter. Whatever your kid's into, you're into. That's the way it is. Um, and so now that you got all these young people in, there's adults getting into it as well. Adults that are good, well-provided, family-structured adults that have the money to spend on stuff, right? Um, you can make the opposite argument too, I know. <laughs> the reason you don't have the money is because they get it all. I get it. But um, you've got all that going on. Then you add into a year like 2020 with you know the COVID stuff, and you've got now you've got those kids that love fishing sitting at home with their mom and dad sitting at home, and they all start going fishing more. And then on top of that, our live coverage, our exposure to the sport on the professional level is we're being exposed to more millions more people than we ever have through national television networks. I mean, fishing championships were on major national television networks like CBS. That's the first time that's ever happened in the history of the sport. You add all that together with the COVID and everything else, and that's why you're seeing all the products within the fishing industry are very difficult to get your hands on and probably will be for the foreseeable future because I don't think anybody that's an old head in this industry that's like, well, this is the way it's always been done, none of them have even come close to grasping the dramatic nature of the growth that has occurred in this industry. None of them. None of them. And it's going to be a while before they understand. What was your question? Kind of a two-part of it. With this cold weather that we had, I'm going to assume that a lot of the fish that were going to come up and spawn aren't. So, you know, they're going to be delayed. Are they going to wait until what, the next full moon? Or I have, I have, they, a, they, I have a take on that. Uh, because they're cold-blooded, Fish you don't, you don't think it, no, and I think that because of that nature that's built into them, because of the extremes from one to the other, when that water warms as, as vastly as what we did, having a whole week of yeah. warm, it negates a lot of yeah, it, it to a certain really extent. They recovered really quick. They recovered really, really quick, and you know that, that cold snap will affect it right there. But let's say, for example, if we had another cold front that would have happened in the middle of this week and the temps would have been in the teens or the 20s, different story. Things yeah. might have drug Most on yeah. for a, a month longer than normal. What what is that? And, and yeah, that's basically my, my thought too. Basically what I would say is that probably at least half, if not the majority of the fish that were getting ready to spawn before that cold front are spawning now on this moon. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So they're go they're 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 doing their thing right now. It doesn't but those but, but, start the cycle you're saying it just No, it just puts it on pause. Okay. It just puts it on pause. Sure. It, we experience okay. this to some extent or the other every year in the state of Texas. Oh, where and I used to call it the Texas two step. It's like boom, boom, boom. You know, with the hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. We experience that every year in January, February right here. And, and every time that those fish that pull in, and I, I've talked about this in the past, but when they pull in and they're getting ready to spawn, when it freezes them, all they do is just kind of squeeze and hold. They just go to the nearest drain, the nearest drop-off, and they just sit tight and don't do nothing. Because when the water dramatically cools off, their metabolism shuts down and they don't have to do anything. And they just sit down and then it warms back up and they go right back to doing what they were doing. Now, this was a way more extreme version of that, but with the extreme warm-up behind it, like David said, no, they've, the fish that were about to spawn when that cold front hit, they are now, instead of spawning on that new moon or whatever it was, now they're about to spawn on this full moon that we're having tonight. Uh, and then you'll have, it's by no means the majority of the lake or the majority of the fish. And it never is in February. The majority of the lake is not spawning in February ever. Um, but the early spawners, it just it held them up a couple of weeks. Ago. It's just unique that this week was so warm. That's very unique compared so, to the contrast. So, just, the contrast, yeah, yeah, the contrast from one week to the yeah. next. Did, did the cold water, this forty-six degree water that we've got out there now, how's that affecting the shad? Yeah. We have had some shad die. I've seen shad floating around here and there. I don't think it was anything like a major huge event. And to be honest with you, we could stand to have some shad go out, go out, come out of this lake. We have, you know, when they do shocking surveys out here, you ask anybody with Texas Parks that does shocking survey out here, they'll tell you there's no place on earth that has the dynamic of the bait source that we have here. Yeah. And we could honestly stand to lose some shad. It would make the fishing better. <laughs> like it would. Because those, those fish, I mean, these fish in this lake, I mean, think about what we're seeing in those surveys and stuff. They sit on one stump. 
They just eat whatever swims by because there's freaking shad everywhere. So I have seen some shad floating around the lake. I've seen some happy herons sitting on top of low stumps out on the surface of the water this week. They're just sitting there plucking dead shad as they come by. Um, but no, there's been no major, nothing that I've seen where I've seen like a, a bank full of shad or anything like that. Nothing crazy. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking of, of you know, the, the fish that aren't ready to spawn now, yeah. maybe the ones that are in March, or, mm-hmm. you know, especially in March, it's going to be a long time, but the, the shad kill, where are the shad, what are they doing? Well, these guys all, a, all a wintertime shad kill does is make you fish fatter. They just, I mean, they just sit around and don't do nothing and just walk up and eat this one and just walk, and they don't hardly have to move. And, and so shad kill is not, unless it completely decimates your shad population, shad kill in the wintertime is really never a bad thing. It's actually can be, it can be a, a thing that makes fishing very, very difficult when it happens mm-hmm. because those fish are just sitting around fat and happy and don't have to do nothing. So they become very difficult to catch. But even a major shad kill, I mean, shad are like alligators, like you can't get rid of them, you know, mm-hmm. like. They recover so quickly, and they spawn in such overabundant numbers that you can't really hurt a shad population long term by one shad kill on a freeze. Um, And it actually makes the fishing better because it makes all the fish bigger and fatter and healthier and stronger and meaner. So once you get over that initial bunch of fat, sassy big girls sitting on the bottom eating dead shad, once you get past that, it's actually a good thing. I was on the lake Saturday and Sunday all day last, last weekend, and saw very few. I yeah, mean, just a few. You'd pull up on an area, and, and uh, I spent one day just doing nothing but fishing deep. And every now and then you'd see a shad up close to the surface, just swimming around the circle, going down. But there wasn't any of them just laying up there. Just that was already dead. I, I've seen just a few that were completely and I didn't dead see all week. Any dead ones, and I expected to see a lot. I could probably count on these two hands how many dead shad I've seen all week. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's pretty amazing, really. To be honest with you, the, the feeding on the shell beds. Yeah, you know, type of thing with the water being as cold as it is. Are mm-hmm. they, are they doing that? Yeah. I've been hunting for warm water this week. The limited time that I've been able to get out, I've been really hunting for. And one day I spent a full day out here in a Texas Park Smaller, but I didn't get to fish or say where we went or anything. Yeah. But uh, the limited time that I've been, I've been hunting warm water. Yeah. But I, yes, there are fish feeding on shell beds. I, I guarantee shell you beds that really are. aren't going to work till August. I'm sorry. I, I, just, <laughs> I just wouldn't spend any time there. Here we go. Don't really think about here it here much. Here we go. Here we go again. No, Come on, yeah, nobody agrees with me? The shell bed feeding is definitely still occurring, no doubt about it. Um, and, and as far as the shad kill, well, the shell bed deal, for me, is much more related to gizzard chad than it is thread feed. And them gizzard chad came through that cold just fine. I'll promise. Gizzard chad can live in colder water. They like colder water. They do better in colder water than those, shad, than those thread fin do. The lake's three inches. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically full. Like yeah. yeah, it was Tuesday. I know Tuesday we checked it when I was out with Texas Parks, and it was three quarters of a foot low. So it's it's come up essentially, well, I guess it's come up six, eight inches. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. So it's there. I'm up to nine dead cormorants <laughs> on the bank. Nine. From the cold? Yeah. Holy crap. Can we get more? Never mind. Bring the cold back. Let's go to zero degrees for a month. Let's get rid of these dang cormorants. And they say it killed that one swan, you know, and the other swans went. It killed my guard swans? Yeah, one of them, the, the other one has been just crying. Just, yeah, it's sad. Hmm. I bet it killed their babies, too. Oh, I, their eggs, their eggs. Because, you know, they like tried to attack me one day when I was in there. <laughs> they did. They tried to get in my boat, man. I had to, like, swing the net at them and yell at them. Um, and I was assuming that that little island back in there, they must have had some eggs or young ones on or something. I bet it killed them <coughs> for sure. I, I don't know. I went down to my bank and there was probably 20 little birds, but you know, as I and there were three cormorants, and one cormorant was even on the bank. You know, he had just fell over dead on the bank, but uh, it knocked the cormorant population down. It also killed my tankless water heater. Oh, I got to tell you, <laughs> I, oh, that's not good. It killed that's, that's a bad deal. It exploded and the garage was flooded. That's a bad deal. <laughs> you played some good hockey games in the garage. <laughs> that thing. The water did freeze in there too. Yeah, you could play just... some good hockey in there. No, the com- yeah, the comrade population getting knocked out. That would be the best thing I've heard. That's the best news I've heard in a long time, right there. It, it did. I haven't seen but what two live ones back in. That, how dumb is that bird? Two. Fly south. Yeah. Like, I no, because it's, it's, it's too far to walk. Yes, <laughs> well, they could have gone to Mexico. Hey, that hurricane came in, and we had spoonbills on Lake Fort when that hurricane hit Florida. Did y'all remember that? 
there was a hurricane that was coming to Florida, and we had flocks of spoonbills in Lake Fort. Y'all know what a spoonbill is? It's like a little miniature flamingo with a funny face, funny beak. Yeah, I was fishing right across from your place, right across from it. And there was a flock of spoonbills back there feeding in the grass. And I'm like, did these escape a zoo? Or... <laughs> escape a zoo. Because <laughs> they're from Florida. Uh, we have them on the Texas coast. Do we have them on Texas yeah. coast? Down at Anahuac. Oh, yeah. Really? Reserve is just. Yeah, we, I didn't realize we had them in Texas coast. Yeah, I saw them this week. You know, I was watching them from my house. You know, that's all I had to do. I know, I know where we don't have them. We don't typically have spoonbills at Lake Fork. I know that. It was a, it was a unique no, deal. We had a bunch of every duck. You know, I mean, I had 200 ducks right there on the bank. Oh, you talking about No, I'm talking about in the past when we had a hurricane. No, spoonbill is not a duck. It's a, it looks like a flamingo with a funny duck. Oh, you're it's talking. It's like a, the no, pink birds that came in there about two or three years ago. Duck, but there is a spoonbill duck. You're right. You're right. There is. No, there was some funny looking pink birds that come from the ocean, come from the marshes, and they flew all the way up to Lake Fork to get away from a hurricane. Smart. Yeah, why didn't the conference do that? You know what? Because they're dumb. We need to get rid of them. They need to get them. No, we did. We got rid of a bunch. That's good. That's a really good question. Questions. More questions. Got to have another. Oh, not one fish have I caught this week was from deep water. You know, they they had color instead of being white. Oh, they've been there yeah. for a while? Yeah. They were yeah. All and, that pope, and that Pope drives around in this bill that's got glass <laughs> on it. And this thing is, it protects him from you being know, shot at. You know the weather that we had. Uh, the weather that we had in January. I'm sure those fish have been shallow for a long time. They were sitting there ready to spawn. You know the warmest water has been the shallow water since mid January, really. So I, yeah, I have no doubt they've been living there for a month or more. So. Any other questions? What did that rain do to the to the clarity? Well, where it flows, it got it pretty dirty. It, yes. It's flowing. It's flowing. So. It's muddy. Yeah, where it, where it flows hard, it's dirty. We got like four inches in red. Yeah. See, the thing, too, yeah, about the main, that... The main lake and some of the other pockets aren't bad, but, yeah. What ends up happening is, is that when you get big rains like this, luckily the lake was already low, and so they don't open the gates. But whenever they open those gates, and you continuously get rains Pull like this, the, all clear yeah. water goes out the gates, and then Pull that, that water keeps tracking down towards the dam. No. And That's about to start happening and if it's, you don't quit. The last three years, it's happened pretty religiously, because we've had a lot of rain in Mud January, hole. February, and March. So... This is on the track, but I uh, somebody told me this was a, a La Nina. What is it, El Nino or La Nina? Nino. Which one's a dry one? Uh, was the year that you're not supposed to get a lot of rain. I'm calling <clears throat> BS on that, you know. So, not only have we got a lot of rain, we had rain that stuck around with us for six days. Yeah, mm -hmm. rained all night. It rained, and then the rain just stayed there frozen for six days straight. Yeah, so yeah. man, my gutters were something to behold in that whole deal. <laughs> the gutters on my house frozen. Yeah, they were frozen, man. There was one that like had like a, I guess, it's like an ice spout coming out of the oh, bottom yeah. of the gutter. It just froze like that. And that was weird. And then as it started melting, it started melting so fast, it was like pouring over the side of the house, but inside the gutter was still frozen. Mm -hmm. and it had like these giant popsicles in my gutters. Yeah. We had three and four foot stalactites hanging down. Oh, yeah. Those were all over the place at the house. Yeah, my truck looked real mean. It looked like it had teeth on the front. <laughs> Any other, any other questions? I guess we'll wrap this one up for now. Hey, thank y'all for coming. I know almost all y'all stayed the whole time. I appreciate it. Good luck at Bass Champs tomorrow. And David, thank you for joining me again, brother. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me on, man. And uh, thank you to Lake Fork Marina. They always do a real good job taking care of us. If y'all need some tackle, get downstairs and get some. Y'all go eat next door at Tiffany's. Get that prime rib deal going. It's good. It'll, it'll. We'll be doing I can it. attest. It'll work. <laughs> it'll get the job done. Thank y'all. We'll be back. Actually, we won't be back in two weeks. I'll be at a tournament. We'll be back in four weeks.